I'm going to digitize some vinyl coming up on Thrifty AV. This record belongs to Sarah Mason. She's a co-worker of mine and her mother directed and produced the music on it and her brother and sister sang in the choir on it. Sarah has no way to play back this record so I'm going to digitize it for her. First step, clean it up. The only protection this record has right now is this old torn paper sleeve. I'll be changing that once I'm done cleaning it. I'll be cleaning it with the Spin Clean Record Cleaner. I already have the, the spools in here. I need to insert the brushes. I need to fill the basin with distilled water. Now I'm going to pour a cap full of the solution onto the brushes. All right, now I'm going to insert the record. Now I'm spinning it both clockwise and counterclockwise and then I'm going to allow the excess water to drain off the record. All right, now I'm going to set it on a lint-free towel and dry it off. I'm going to set it on a dish rack to air dry. It seems kind of a waste to pull this out and just clean one record with it. So I'm going to clean a few more while I'm at it. The records have been clean and have had a chance to dry, but I'm not about to stick them in the same old dirty sleeves they came out of. I'm going to put them in fresh new poly sleeves instead. Not only do I care about the vinyl, I also care about the art, so I'm going to use these outer sleeves to keep the jackets in good condition as well. The record that I'm digitizing only had this paper sleeve. I'm going to put it in this generic cardboard sleeve with the hole in the middle where you can see what the contents are. So this is much better protection than what it originally came with. When I'm done digitizing, I'll even put an outer sleeve around this. All the records that I cleaned except for this one are copyrighted material. This is a high school choir, so I'm not worried about a copyright strike on this one. So I can play longer segments than I normally might. Here's a quick rundown of the gear I'm using for this digitizing process. The turntable is a GLI Pro SL2500. This is modeled after a Techniques SL1200. I'm not going to be doing any scratching, so I don't need this felt slip mat. I'm going to be using this Pioneer rubber mat instead. The Phono cartridge is a Shure M97XE. They don't make these anymore, so I'm glad I was able to get one before they were discontinued. The preamp is an Art Accessories USB Phono Plus. I'm running the Phono level with ground out of the turntable into the back of this. And then I'm running USB out of this into my laptop computer. The computer I'm using is a HP ProBook 6470B. I'm running Audacity 2.2.2 to do the encode. I've switched from my lavalier mic to the shotgun mic on my camera so you get a better idea of what I'm hearing while I'm monitoring this. I want to set my levels correctly so I'm going to drop the needle somewhere toward the middle of the first side. This record is definitely, definitely has some wear. I'm hearing some pretty loud pops and clicks in here. My record level is peaking somewhere between negative 6 and negative 9 dB because I'm showing some slight clipping on the preamp. So I'm going to drop the level on the preamp side. Okay, now I'm peaking at about negative 12 dB and I like that a little better. I'm going to go ahead and record the entire first side and then chop it up into tracks later. I made some mistakes on the first pass so I'm going to do this again. 
which means I need to brush it off. And I'm going to do yet another needle drop on side one. Alright, I'm dropping the gain to a nice safe level. I'm going to boost it in post production. You might wonder why I have such a conservative audio level on this. And the reason why is that the signal and noise ratio on this file is considerably better than the signal and noise ratio on that vinyl I'm playing back. So I'll always be able to boost this, but once you brick wall a waveform, you can't undo that. During the recording process, I set somewhat conservative levels for this waveform. These little spikes you see are uh, noise, pops and clicks in the recording. Thank you, good friend, for your dances and your gifts. I've saved a clean copy of the Side 1 and Side 2 wave files, but I'm going to manipulate this a little bit and see if I can clean up some of these pops and crackles. I'm going to start by gathering a, a noise sample. So I'm going to go Control 1 and find a silent passage in the music between songs, like right here. Effects, noise reduction, and I'm gonna get noise profile from this little section right here. Now I'm going to select all, effect, noise reduction, and hit okay. And it will apply this noise reduction to the entire side one. The pops and clicks are still there though. So I'm going to have to use a different tool to remove the pops and clicks. Okay, so that will be effect click removal. The default click removal is around 200 for threshold with a max spike width of 20. I'm going to try that out. Thank you, good friends, for your dances and your gifts. And the clicks were reduced. Now they're still there. I can still hear them. And the music itself doesn't sound greatly affected. So these default settings are working pretty good for click reduction. Now that I've reduced the level of the clicks, I can normalize my audio. That brought the levels up quite a bit higher. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this file because it sounds pretty good to me. So I'm going to export it as a wave. Now I want to try something a little more aggressive. I'm going to set it instead of at 200, I'm going to set it at 100 for the threshold. That obviously reduced the peaks of the clicks that were already there. The big question is, did it adversely affect the music? I'm going to go ahead and undo that and I'm going to try click removal and I'm going to reduce the threshold even more. I'm going to see what 50 does. Alright, now I can hear that it is adversely affecting the music. So I don't want to keep this setting. It took music out as well as clicks. So I'm going to undo the click removal. So I'm going to go back to effect, click removal, take this back to 100. I'm going to try a wider spike width. I'm going to try as wide as the spike width will get of 40 and see how that affects the music. I think that did a better job. Alright, so this is the file that I'm going to share. I'm going to go ahead and maximize it one more time. Normalize again with the clicks removed. Loud clicks and pops are a distraction. So even though the signal processing I've applied here might affect the music a little bit, it's worth it to reduce the amplitude of the pops and clicks for a casual listener. 
So I've done it with side one. I'm about to do the same thing with side two and I'll be burning a CD from these tracks. I applied the same filters that I did on side one to side two. I chopped up the tracks and named them and burned a CD from those tracks. In addition, I have a thumb drive in here with MP3s of those tracks plus the original needle drop wave files that have not been altered. If you enjoyed this video or any other in the Thrifty AV series, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons, including a new patron for supporting my channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.